Hello and welcome to Scientology uh, coverage of by um, E. Stuart Mills of the law firm of We Fucking M- We Fucking Men How, and I'm bringing you exclusive news. Oh, I like that music in the background. I like it a lot. So um, I am um, faux attorney E. Stuart Mills. I represent the Church of Scientology. And uh, I'm here to, to just bring you up to date on all things Scientology from uh, uh, from my client, <clears throat> Professor David Miscavige, or COB. So welcome, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. Hello, Monkey Paws. Always good to see you here. Greetings. Uh, oh, yes, they're talking to each other. Hi, Pam. Uh, one viewer asks, uh, Tristan DeBoer asks, um, Dear Mr. Stuart Mills, please call me Stuart. Um, what is the reason that Scientology buildings are so luxurious? These facilities appear palatial. Is there a link with clearing the planet? Yes, yes, and no. The reason that Scientology uh, facilities are so luxurious, well, some of them, some of them are actually shit houses. Um, Cleveland, <laughs> excuse me, Tampa, <laughs> and some of the missions. Well, uh, L. Ron Hubbard, Dr. Hubbard, nuclear physicist, said that Scientology is known by its mast. So we have to have luxurious buildings that are good enough for Tom Cruise to bring his friends into. And that was really uh, the genesis of upgrading the orgs was that. Uh, uh, hi, Clearwater Chad. Did you get my message? Uh, anyway, glad to have you here, Clearwater Chad. And uh, glad to have cleared our chat in. I, I didn't send, um, maybe we'll make it next time, Chad. But um, I'm talking to a known, known um, suppressive person, Clearwater Chad. So, anyway, um, uh, we had back uh, Tom Cruise when we, uh, Marty Rathman recovered him back in. And uh, that's a whole story. Um, and he got divorced from Nicole Kidman. He said he complained to David Miscavige, the chairman of the board of the Religious Technology Center, which is a California corporation, that the facilities were not nice enough to bring his friends in. And Mr. Miscavige was aghast, so that's why we spent hundreds of millions of dollars to make them nice enough for Tom Cruise's friends to come in. Now, do any of Tom Cruise's celebrity friends come into the orgs? No. So it was kind of a waste of money. But, you know, I mean, we did get Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith. And you know what? Let me tell you this about Will Smith. He was a crypto Scientologist, a secret Scientologist, he and Jada Pinkett Smith. But he dropped off course. And then what happened? He wound up slugging. <laughs> this is so difficult. You have to understand some Scientology language. Okay. Going into the valence of means you're acting like. So when you go into the valence of David Miscavige, it means you're acting like David Miscavige. So what happened there was that um, uh, Will Smith went into the valence of David Miscavige and he slapped Chris Rock on the Oscars. This is what happens when you go off Scientology courses. Will Smith should have stayed on Scientology course. Ad should have Jada. And we could have handled their open marriage and Will's temper tantrum. And we could have handled um, a lot of other things. So um, so the facilities are luxurious because we have to spend money to satisfy the damned IRS. And we also have to... Um, um, we also have to um, satisfy um, David Miscavige and Tom Cruise. So the whole thing turned into giant cluster fluck. And um, so we have very nice orgs in some places. Some were really crappy, like the Plymouth one in Plymouth, England is rotting and full of mold, like a lot of them. So, uh, but they're not, they have to be nice enough for Tom Cruise, basically. Uh, not that he ever would come into the orgs because he's doesn't want to be seen. Hope that explains it. Um, Pam, I've gotten I have gotten several notifications 
Attorney Mills. I jumped on fearing I was late. Oh, no, you're on time. You're actually early. I shall return. Greetings from Ventura CA. I need this intellectual stim stimulation this evening. Well, so do I. And uh, so we have Clearwater Chad. Oh, hi, Joe Gerst. Welcome. Good to see you again. Warrior Queen. Woo -hoo -hoo. I made it. I'm glad you made it. Bat Goat. Oh, I like that picture. Word up, SPs. Word up indeed. <laughs> bat Goat. <laughs> what is a Bat Goat? Um, so I want to bring you up to date on some of Scientology's many successes. I've been asked to by uh, David Miscavige to let you know just how successful Scientology has been. Now, um, we opened the uh, Paris Ideal Org. Um, Mr. Mills, would a touch assist cure Jada's alopecia? Yes, according to Scientology, according to Dr. Hubbard, it will cure, Scientology will cure cancer. Um, eliminate the need for Viagra, if you know what I mean. Because apparently body thetans are the cause of uh, erectile dysfunction. And so if you get a touch assist, uh, wait, that didn't come across right. Scientology, certain Scientology auditing techniques in the happy room will eliminate the need for Viagra and restore a man's regenerative abilities. That is, can you say boner? No, I'm sorry, no. Um, that's the boner rundown. It's called informally <laughs> to cure ED, <laughs> the boner rundown. That didn't go over well with M Mr. Miscavige. I think maybe <laughs> hit a little close to the boner rundown to um, <clears throat> take care of those <clears throat> intimate problems. And in whether you're in a 2D or you just need the solo 2D assist, as it's called, um, would a touch assist to fix Grant? Cardone's personality defects. Now, Wayne, don't get snappy here. As it, she said in Fargo, you have no reason to get snappy with me, Wayne. Um, Grant Cardone's personality defects. Is he actually a jerk or is he an OT? Is he an insufferable narcissistic bore or is he an OT? We're going to get into Grant Cardone. I'm glad you brought that up. So, yeah, a touch assist in the happy room. <laughs> they have that at, oh, my dear. I hope I don't have, oh, I hate when that happens. I dined in the dining room at HGB just before the show. And, uh, oh, gosh, I got something on my teeth. How embarrassing. Oh, it's a cluster. It's a cluster of body things. Let me see, Brandana. You're supposed to get me all fixed before the show. Anyway, oh, how horrible. I'm glad I'm not in court defending Scientology. Okay, so, yes, a touch assist cures ED, but not in all cases. <clears throat> you need the actual boner rundown. Okay, so, um, <laughs> yeah, Christine Fountain. <laughs> it is funny, but um, they do do that at Flag. It's a secret. Man and men, man only run down the ED run down, and ED doesn't mean executive director, it means um, erectile dysfunction. Um, so the boner run down removes body things. Yes, when they're occluding um, the male organ, you need to do the boner run down um, to get rid of the body things that are occluding. <clears throat> the working of the equipment. Now there's also uh, one for lady parts. And um, that's called the, uh, it's like a menopausal rundown. And it rehabilitates some, somehow the lady parts. Now I'm, a, I'm you know, I don't get involved in the, t the technology, but they handle the lady parts. Oh, the parts that's, handles the lady parts. Uh, let's just call it the lady parts rundown. I'm <laughs> boner rundown. Yeah, you have to though, in order to get the boner rundown, you have to do the purification rundown first to get all. And then of course, my favorite book, uh, Dr. Farley Spink in All About Radiation. You have to run out, the man has to run out all the radiation that's stored in his <clears throat> package. 
in his junk. So Scientology has exact procedures in the purification and down to run out all the stored radiation and whole track drugs in your um, junk, in your package, before you can do the boner rundown. And then once you do that, then your 2D, um, whether it's a solo 2D assist, that all gets fixed. People don't know. This is why, you know, Scientologists have... Um, <laughs> Wayne, don't go there. Don't make me slap you. I can't believe what our... Best to bring your wife to discuss the lady parts rundown. Yeah, it's uh, that lady parts rundown is done in the pink room. It's been called the Barbie room at flag. But um, Marty will teach you. for. <laughs> you are right, Chad. And we're going to soon have him on the next episode. Um, Mr. Mills turns a lovely pink. Each time he mentions the BRD lady <laughs> estrogen cream also works for the lady parts run down topical application or is it, um, yeah, you know, my sixth wife, uh, wait, wait, gas tax, Marty, he's my guy. <laughs> so anyway, enough about the boner rundown and the pink lady parts rundown. Um, well, we may get back to them. You know, this is open. But what the thing that um, uh, Mr. Miscavige asked me to share was the huge success. And here is Mr. Miscavige at the um, grand opening of the, the Paris Ideal Org. And there was some controversy, as they say in England, some controversy over whether or not um, Monsieur uh Monsieur Miscavige, Monsieur Miscavige actually appeared um, in Paris, or did he go in a week earlier and film it? And he was a no-show. There's some controversy. Did Monsieur Miscavige actually appear in front of the live audience? Well, the, the answer is no. Um, what happened is um, the uh, the um, ecclesiastical leader of the Scientology religion didn't actually. He was there, but not. He filmed the sequence, but he wasn't actually there because um, you know what works better? THC cream. Care to share with us, Wayne? Have you applied THC to your member? Did it work better than the boner rundown? Okay. David Miscavige, six, six. I've seen him. He's just uh, disappointingly, um, he's height challenged. So Mr. Miscavige opened, and I'm supposed to read this. This is obviously ridiculous, but <clears throat> Scientology is claiming that 30, wait, no, wait, 135 million people appeared to watch, uh, David Miscavige speak at the opening of the ideal org. There's Mr. Miscavige at L. Ron Hubbard's birthday. And you can see Ron up on uh, the upper right hand corner with his big birthday cake. Ron was um, beamed, his image was um, beamed through a series of special Theta, um, theta Bot satellites from Target 2. So that's actually Ron on Target 2 um, celebrating, celebrating his birthday party. He's 100, 113 years old, he's on Target 2. Look at that stage set. It looks like it looks like a Scientology wet dream. Uh, my gosh, it's like it's like a, an orgasm. It really looks like a a, a blue orgasm and um, golden showers. I this thing is so lurid in its implications in light of what have we been discussing. So. Uh, David Miscavige has been a busy boy and you can see, he, so when 135 million people attended the grand opening of the Paris Ideal Org with Mr. Miscavige discussing the Bonner Rundown. Oh, 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 I can help you, Pierre. You need the, the Bonner Rundown. Um, would that be something? I bet that would sell if they really did it to eliminate the need for Viagra. And then Ron had his 
I know, Pam, they have cake on Target, too. Ho-hos and Twinkies and cake. And Ron eats them all. Well, you know what, Jenna? If you look at it, it's like, it, it's like, yeah, it's like a climax. It's like really hideous like this. I mean, it's just um, kind of foamy and uh, it doesn't look right. It's like dial it back, Dave. Um, that's just like way over. It's like, I would say, Jenna, uh, uh, too much frosting on the cupcake, David Miscavige. That's what I would say. Too much frosting on the cupcake. There's just too much going on. What you really want to have is it since it's Ron's birthday, you should have Dave down on the first floor while Ron, you know, is being beamed in live through Theta Vision, blowing out his 113 candles. But the old man, the um, new uh, Dr. Hubbard, does look very happy that he's got this this birthday party. So um, there's a picture of David Miscavige. You know, people talk about him like here he's all dressed up in a tuxedo, but in his real life, you know, some people have made allegations, slanderous allegations that he's gay, that he's got a homoerotic bromance going on with Tom Cruise. Nothing could be further from the truth. Um, actually, David Miscavige here is pictured with his harem of Mark Cab women. And um, the woman behind him is, is not to the, his left, is not Shelly in that jumpsuit. No, that's one of his communicators. But the blue women are his Mark Cab harem. So he's quite, he's quite um, a randy fellow. So that's, that's Dave, you know, when he's relaxing, when he's not having to be COB, he's, with his harem, and he has an earth woman. And um, yeah, Pam, that's exactly it. It looks like any other. Look, all churches have events like this where there's this um, explosion of um, white and a blue background on a velvet bedspread and then um, golden. Um, um, in any way, you get it. LRH had little candles on his cake. Yes, they were little candles. Theta Vision. I knew that. See, the Theta Vision was working perfectly. So there's Dave with his uh, Mark Cab women. And um, he's done the boner rundown, obviously. So um, in other news, Grant Cardone, he's a real baller. Um, here is a picture of Grant relaxing in the Scientology whale, Scientology whale room at Flagland Base. That's where all the whales go. Um, so Grant likes to go there and smoke a big stogie, big cigar, one of his big Havana cigars and drink. So Grant's really at home at Flag because it is all about money. It really is all about money. So uh, Grant, uh, Grant, uh, Grant was asking me about advice. You know, I told you I'd got, I've gotten closer with Grant since he um, helped get his dick out of a ringer on that legal case. And he um, did send me a cigar. And uh, I was going to smoke it last episode, but we can't smoke in the studio. So I still have it, Grant. And when I meet you at Flag next, we'll have to smoke a we'll have a smoke together and a drink. Now Grant got off drugs, but he made it clear in the uh, Jean Leger lawsuit he's suing uh, former uh, uh, T-Mobile CEO Jean Leger for one hundred million dollars for slander. And Mr. Leger said, "Grant, you said Scientology got you off drugs, but you drink like a fish." And Grant said, yeah, that's different. I never had a problem with al alcohol, al alcohol. So um, I guess you can get off drugs and drink. Um, Grant seems to enjoy it. Um, you know, uh, so anyway, Grant said, hey, 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 um, Stuart. Hey, Stuart. I'm thinking of doing this idea of copying Kanye getting Elena Cardone because Grant had gone through the BR run, you know, the <clears throat> boner rundown and um, he's feeling virile. Uh, and, you know, 
I don't need the BR, by the way. I've just got so much, so much testosterone flowing through my messed body. It's ridiculous. It's just, you know, a hunk of hunk of burning love. Um, so from our form 13909. Oh, I like that's a winner. Form 13909. Form 13909 is the IRS form. You fill out a 13909 to um, complain about tax-exempt organizations such as the Church of Scientology to the IRS. Just Google IRS 13909, Form 13909. That's clever. You, I'm tempted to give you a special prize for that. I don't have one handy. I usually keep special. But you're going to get a special prize. That's a great scream name. And um, anyway should get a, a, a special pen. Maybe I'll start having we fuck them and how pens. Unstable datum late for muster was with Grant in La Bell's men's room. <laughs> Need help with this nose bleed. <laughs> Can you even say <laughs> that's funny? Um, that is really funny. Did Grant borrow that le that plaid leisure suit from Rodney Dangerfield? No, that's contemporary. Don't you know that um, waffle weave polyester leisure shoes are coming back into style in Miami? They're all the rage. They're all the rage. You wear it. Look at that purple, that purple silk shirt. No, this is it's coming back in. It's retro. It's re It's retro. Mr. Mills, will you tell Mr. Kodai's? Mark, Mr. Cardone, I said, word up. He'll understand. Oh, I'll do that. Yeah, that go. Oh, I will. Um, he is a snappy dresser. And um, yeah, nice. That's real nice. Uh, no, this is, um, I still am troubled by this lurid comment. Things that go on in La Poubelle. La Poubelle. Uh, La Poubelle. It means the trash can in French. And um Francois Coaster called me about help and I told her no. I did not want her as a client. That's 10x, baby. Oh, bat goat, you are so right. Grant is a baller, and that is a fabulous outfit. I think I might go buy me one. And um it was custom made. But I think if you look at the the um um gonadal area, it's maybe padded, you know, <clears throat> cod piece kind of thing. Um, Mr. Mills, I love your hair. Who does it? Well, uh, Brendana, Brendana and I go to the same, uh, stylist in Beverly Hills. And so, uh, uh, yes, Brendana, no, Brendana said we have, we can't say who does our hair because, um, then everyone will go. So my hair is, I'm very particular about my hair. And I'm very particular and I use a lot of product in it. But, you know, I like to, at my age, I use a lot of product because when I go into court, I want to look my best and um, my skin, hair, all the product. So I need a lot of um, maintenance and upkeep. Um, anyway, um, so word up to Grant, that chain, bling, no kidding. Hey, it's all about the money. Jen, Jen, it's all about the money because Grant is, Grant is what? Mr. Cash flow, cash flow. He always talks every you know, the other words, cash flow, cash flow. And um, he needs a Merkin to get some ch chest hair. He does <laughs> that chain. Yeah, Jen, he's uh, he's really quite the guy. So anyway, um, Jen, you know, Grant was uh, Grant. I was just talking to and he said, hey, Hey Stuart, um, I'm thinking. Of I'm thinking of um, copying Kanye West, and and I and so we did some. I arranged to do some photo shoots and with the people at Scientology Media Productions, because Grant wants to like get more young hepsters into Scientology, and more people donating to Cardone, Cardone Capital, which is really a shit invest. Really a shit investment, just between you and me. Um, uh, it's really a shit investment. Four <laughs> percent. 
Brandana, who would invest for 4% is a <laughs> class B. God damn it. That's a horrible investment. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sh shouldn't talk. He's not my client, but I'm just saying <laughs> investing Cardone Capital on freaking idiots. Um, but Grant's trying to get more people in, so he's going to do this Kanye thing with Elena, his wife. Is that a? Oh, can his pants get any higher? Uh, they could be a little bit. Yeah, I like that. I like that 1970s look where your pants, you know, a man's pants were up to his waist. Um, is that a Picasso hanging on your wall? Uh, it's not Picasso. It's not Picasso. It's expensive art, but it's not Picasso. Um, four percent. He makes more money from his selectees. Yes, he does. He makes like ten percent FSM commission. But I think if you're, you can get between four and six. He promises bigger numbers. Sometimes he suspends distributions. Um, Joe, I'm suspicious of people asking about your hairstylist all the time. Do you think it may be SPs looking for a new place to protest? Joe, you're onto something. I think if Brendan and I said we would get our hair done, we would have these live streamers showing up, showing up, and, you know, uh, yeah, so I care more about my hair than sharing it. Now, back to this. Yeah, some of his investors claim to get six, but really, you can just open a CD at 5%. Wait, Mr. T necklace, does that mean little Dave has to fake out Grant and knock him out <laughs> to get him on the, on the jet for the next adventure? <laughs> yeah, he does. No, Grant likes to fly, so it would be it would be Grant knocking out Dave to get him on the next plane. So now get ready for the next slide um, because this is what the concept I've been working on with Grant. And tell me how you like it in the comments. There, we're gonna get a Kanye West theme with Grant and Elena. And Grant's gonna be like Kanye and that's gonna be you know Kanye's new girlfriend. And this would be, promoting 10x to um to younger investors i think this is a winning look i think this is what you know grant and elena should do because what's happening oh cob david miscavige is pissed because grant is so much more popular online is so much more popular online uh than david miscavige so david miscavige is beginning to get a little pissed at grant except grant's bringing in some young idiots to um, Scientology. And I think this is a winning look. I think it's how Grant should walk around. And um, it's a concept I had. I think it was great. Um, no, it looks, I think, I think it works. I think it really works. Um, because, you know, uh, what, what is Kanye's um, girlfriend's name? Um, what is her name? I have to now Google it. Oh, Kanye. I thought I had it. Brendana, what is, what is her name? We just had her in the studio. Oh, yeah. Bianca Sensori. So if we could make Grant and Elena Cardone, the Kanye and Bianca of Scientology, I think that would really bring. Thank you, Monkey Paws. Yeah, Bianca. So I think if we could make. Uh, uh, Grant Cardone, Mr. 10X, um, and Elena, I think if they, we could make them the, the Kanye and Bianca of Scientology, that would be phenomenal marketing concept. I mean, just look at, I mean, that looks, that sh this really should be the state of OT. Instead of all that old boring goddamn crap, L. Ron Hubbard, Okay, look at how sexy this is. Okay, now now let me contrast this. Okay, so you you get you see the picture. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. You see the picture of Grant and Elena being um, being the Kanye and Bianca of Scientology. Now compare this sleek look with this. <laughs> I don't want to promote this Bianca. Do I have to do this? Oh, contractually, it's an order from. David Miscavige. Okay, for fuck's sake, I don't want to do this. Okay, now look at this. 
out. Look at this. Okay. L. Ron Hubbard, classic fiction series. Hostage to death and killer ape. This is, this like comes out of like the 1930s. I mean, and then you got a picture of, look at that guy. That, I mean, hostage to death and killer rape. This is our on Hubbard fiction. And then you got this, it's so friggin' dated. Okay. So, okay. So that, this, this black and white. <sighs> Oaf is supposed to compete with this. No, it won't. What's going to bring in the young people? Who's wh what's going to bring in the next generation of Scientologists and of Cardone Capital investors? Is it going to be Grant and Elena like this, or is it going to be um, hostage to death and killer ape? Uh, God, look at just a, read a sentence. Um, the dead work with that cried Raleigh Raleigh's not even a name the, oh, oh no the devil with that cried Riley fall in we're leaving here before Abdel El Ula decides to come back Morant stepped up with a salute pardon pardon mon lieutenant this is very queer it is all too easy. Shall I send out a vanguard to scout? Send him in immediately if this Ulad swings his face up. Blast him and avant. This is so dated. No, no. We, we're going to say no. We're going to say no to hostage to death and killer ape in L. Ron Hubbard classic fiction series. Throw it out. Just throw it out. Brendana, put it. It's going to goodwill. Um, and, um, what is that other, I had this other thing now, see, I like this modern concept. It's attention getting, it would say there's a new Scientology we can bring people into and there's a boner rundown, everything, um, beautiful cover art. Uh, I guess it's like. They make it at Bridge Publications, but it's just, I mean, you got to like, I mean, it's okay, I guess. I, I mean, it's nothing I would buy. And uh, I should read, I should actually make, do voiceover um, doing, I'll read it as Lauren Hubbard. Ah, uh, setting up. Ah, uh, she held the belt. Wow. Ah, uh, setting up. She held the belt. It's snaky length was devoured by the bait by the breach smoking emptiness handed back in a blurred arc of shining brass the belt went on through the berber was squinting easily through the high night holding the jumpy barrel down with white knuckled hands Ooh, wow sitting up she held the belt i thought it was like um 50 shades of gray um wait that sounded hot fire speak to me Elron. okay we'll do a little bit more Elron harvard i should read from old doc methuselah i'll do that next time um God, that was just like yeah it was like he was going somewhere with that so um ah uh, the cell was lined with slabs of wood which served as bunks Countless generations of incarcerated legionnaires had scrawled their brain. No, that I just we we had one good part and then have it. Um, so uh wow, but bat goat exclaims, I better toke be right back. Toke, yeah. <laughs> OT808 and heartbreaks. <laughs> so let's go back to um okay, so that's the that's what I look to see next with Grant and Elena. And then um, now switching stories, Scientology Celebrity Center, as you know, uh, it's across the street from La Poubelle and the trash can. And so, as was covered in a suppressive blog, um, Scientology Celebrity Center, which opened in 1969, has always welcomed visitors. 
But just suddenly, due to the live streamers, the Jessica Palmadessa, Streets LA, Chris Without a Hellcat, all those other cats, they shut it down. Private property, parishioners and invited guests only. You SPs are no longer welcome as public or visitors to the Celebrity Center. It's private property. You can't go. Oh, Sarasota Jerry takes a cheap shot. I can see why he, Elron Hubbard, only got a penny a word. Oh, Jerry, you really know how to stick it to it. Well, he's on target too, so it's not like he's a dead guy. But the news is Celebrity Center has been closed down to the public. It's not only parishioners and invited guests, so you can't come on there. You are Stay away from it. They don't want you filthy, unwashed, degenerate wogs, you damned, dirty apes. Now, in this other picture, now, this is um, commanding officer Osa, Linda Hamill. She was at her um, o- Osa control station, and she was shocked because there was ink. This just happened last night. And the CIA is trying to cover it up. The U.S. government's trying to cover up about what I'm about to tell you is a matter of the deepest state secrets. Um, back go. K took a B rip. I want Commodore stories to go to sleep. <laughs> you can order them online. <laughs> so uh, OSA last night detected an incoming raid. Now the CIA, the U.S. military, the U.S. government, all the way up to President Biden is what I'm about to tell you is so fucking secret. Okay, so these are real images, though. So um, Linda Hamill was shocked when at, at about, um, you know, early evening last night, a Mark Cab invasion of L. Ron Hubbard Way. These are actual photographs, unretouched. The Mark Cabs were f- invading. Uh, advanced organization Los Angeles in an attempt once again to steal the OT levels because it, the Mark Cabs too, it seems, comma, are bedeviled by body thetans. So the galactic war between Scientology and the Mark Cab Confederacy continues. It continues. And these are actual photos. Now, the story of the conflict between the Markab Confederation and Scientology goes back trillions of years. And here on Earth, it goes back to the first raid was in 1956 in uh, Cleveland when um, during the broad daylight, uh, a sports model, um, that's what Bob Lazar calls it, a sports model um craft from the Mark Cabs tried to go into Scientology to steal the, the clear levels. So this has been going on a long time. Oh, what? We have to, um, we have to, uh, okay. So, um, yeah, it, uh, Xanadu first pick look like, yeah, it does kind of look like Xanadu, but that is L. Ron Hubbard way with the ships coming in and the government's covering it up because Really, the whole secret is that if it were known, if it were known that L. Ron Hubbard was secretly a CIA agent, then the whole thing would fall, collapse. I don't know the logic of that. There's these pic, these, these people online saying that if, if it were known that L. Ron Hubbard was a CIA agent, then the church would collapse. That's a non sequitur. It, for one, it doesn't logically fall. L. Ron Hubbard was not a CIA agent. But if he were, and knowledge of it were made public, nobody would give a shit. It's like, what he was on the payroll? Like, okay, so? I, nothing would happen. So, but um, that young lady who does the videos, she has to live with that hellish nightmare she calls a personality day after day. So, you know, let her blather on. L. Ron Hubbard was not CIA, but what he was, he was involved in a cosmic war with the Marcabs. And they were aligned with the CIA. They were trying to get a whole bunch of stuff. Um, when did when did LRH get his 
teeth are replaced with baby niblet's corn in 1962 because that can cause truth decay. Yes, it was in 62. And uh, I believe Jerry Sandusky did it. The guy who's in prison, was it? Oh, no, no, I'm thinking of someone else. Um, so, oh, wait, they, they want me to show that? Well, I wasn't, <laughs> okay, I've got to give, <laughs> hold on. I didn't want to do this. I hate when I have to do this. Okay, we're, we have to give a word. Um, from uh just a word um hold on we have to <sighs> have to share some information with you okay so i don't want to do this okay now now this is some important vital data that david miscavige wants to share with you so he's sponsoring the program so we're just going to go Come on. Yeah, yeah, we were having problems with the, um, hold on, hold on. So you can't hear Davey? Yeah, yeah, we, we, had a, we had an audio problem there, but you got to see, oh, huh. I'm sorry you couldn't hear Davey. Um, I don't know what the problem was. We had it set up. Brendana, did, where's our producer? Yeah, I couldn't hear him either. But that was, um, um, he was just talking about the Theta being lectures. They're, they have like 2 million copies they made that never sold, and they were on a special discount. Um, there was an emergency at the Slurry Center at approximately 9 p.m. last night because a spy in a hat walking his dog veered too close to the 1970s tech bug eye lens equipment. Yep. Causing the bridge to collapse. So I heard. Yes. Yes. There was a suppressive in a cowboy hat. We think he was a private investigator there. Um, and um, so. Yeah, there's these people. They're around. They're dangerous. They're dangerous. And um, supposedly he's the one who's pushing back on the idea that LRH was not CIA, according to that check on whatever. Um, uh, were the bricks on LRH way laid by city or Sea Org slaves? They were laid by Scientologists. Some were Sea Org, some were public members, some were on the RPF. And they were the ones that, that laid the bricks on LRH way. So to answer your question, it, it used to be called Berendo, B-E-R-E-N-D-O, Berendo Way. And then they, the church got, after they purchased Cedars Alone, on, they got the name changed to L. Ron Hubbard Way. L. Ron Hubbard Way. Um, it's okay. I could smell his thoughts because I'm a smell path, Reverend Orr says. Oh, a smell a path. Smell a path. Yes. You got to de detect the odor of uh, body things. Munchkins laid those bricks. Yes, happy Scientologists did. A Thetan interrupted the sound. That's what happened. And it wasn't that interesting anyway, but at least you got to see him in his um, fleet admiral out form. Davey will send you to 
you to lawyer RPF for messing up the sound. He can't because that's in my contract. I can't be lawyered RPF'd. Um, was Robert W. Walsh aware of L. Ron Hubbard's Mark Hub invasion theory? Um, I'm sure he was, as well as the earlier 1956 incursion where they were trying to steer, steal the clear, um, the clear theory. Mainly Linda. Hi, Linda. My fave lawyer. Hi, Silver Fox. Well, hello, you blondie. Sorry, I'm late to class. No problem. This is this is like just um, come, you know, come as you are. Uh, but the, you did miss the part about the boner rundown. I'm sorry, the um, ED rundown at flag. So and then the pink lady parts thing. So sometimes if you're late, you miss some of the uh, some of the curriculum we offer here. So there was there's a Mark Cab invasion. And that's really one of the things. So by way of saying more upon, moreover, whereupon the reason David Miscavige was not in Paris, but, re, but pre-recorded it was he knew he had to be back here in Los Angeles to handle the Markab invasion because our spies in Osa got some advanced warning um, through the implant station on Mars. We have like a back channel there. So that's why he wasn't in Paris. He was here in LA handling. Yes, you'll have to check the replay. It's worth worth listening to it. Some really some inside scoop. So Mr. Miscavige was handling the Markab, the attempted Markab invasion, which David Miscavige and Tom Cruise fended off all by themselves. They had to fight it off because all the other Sea Org were locked down um, so the live streamers couldn't see them. It was quite a mess. Now, what the Church of Scientology is doing in response to this ongoing Markab invasion is they're spending $250 million, and this is on a Church of Scientology. Um, yes, the uh, sports model. Yeah, that's Bob Lazar sports model. Yes, that's it. And um, good, good, good for you. I'm, I'm not a lot of people would have gotten the Bob Lazar reference. So the Church of Scientology is spending $250 million and it is erecting a special spaceship. It's a fighter spaceship. Um, no, Elon Musk is not building it um, unless he becomes a Scientologist. So they're going to, they're erecting this spaceship out, out in the desert and those are Sea Org slaves building it. But this is going to be a special, special Scientology um, spaceship that can fight the Markabs. No, Mary. Oh, hi, Mary. Good to see you, Mary Craig Smith. It's not a Zeppelin. It's a, a, it's a Zeppelin hangar, which is very good. No, this is an actual spaceship. It's based on plans L. Ron Hubbard drew when he was here with us on Tijiak which is the name of Earth, Tijiak. Um, they should change the name of L. Ron Hubbard way to <laughs> Y-S-C-O-H-B. I agree. <laughs> that would meet me at the corner of Sunset and Youth on, on Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> they should. So, uh, Mary, um, no, it's not a Zeppelin. It's a, it's, when Aaron Harbour was alive, he drew the plans for a, a nuclear-powered spaceship that could travel faster than light and had death rays that were made of OT, um, OT particles. So it was a particle, a Scientology a particle beam weapon. Um, so um, that's what we're doing to fight it off. $250 million, um, and as I understand it, Grant Cardone's construction firm will be overseeing it, and he'll be taking part of the skim. I made Mar I visited Markab once, made me too blue. So will colloidal silver, colloidal silver. And one time, um, COB went on a kick taking colloidal silver, and he turned blue. And we had to dip him in a vat you know, some chemical in Peru, some natural native herbs in Peru. We had to dip into that and then take him over to Germany for a final skin finish to restore him. Um, 
Smellopathy is a rare superpower. Problem is, few of the thoughts I smell translate into English. That is always the problem. That is always the problem. That looks dope, says Bat Goat. Would I have to give up golfing with Zeno every Christmas in Palm Desert? Um, no, you don't have to. You don't have to. Not at all. Um, it's a giant lint roller. How dare you, Pam? No, it's a highly advanced L. Ron Hubbard design spacecraft. Hope they fly that spaceship better than they park their cars. Ooh, yeah, me too. Because this is this thing is just um, quite an advanced weapon. And um, so piloting it, of course, is Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise will be piloting the Church of Scientology's spaceship in the war, the upcoming war between the Marcabs and Scientology. It's headed down. So um, Tom Cruise is there. Now we needed he needed a co-pilot, and we got Monique Blinky Yingling, but, but um, we put her in her flight suit, and so she failed astronaut testing because she vomited. Um, she can't handle the stress. Look at her eyes rolled back. So Tom Cruise is now looking for another uh, OT eight astronaut to go into battle in the Scientology spaceship, and Monique couldn't do it. The old girl's, I think, 72 or 73. She just, she's just not up to it. Um, you know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, that type of thing. And, um, you know, so it's not a DC-8. No, it's not. It's not a DC-8. Uh, so, um, by the way, we did find out through DNA research that Monique Yingling is the secret love child of the late uh, Leona Helmsley and L. Ron Hubbard. So she's actually L. Ron Hubbard's um, daughter, uh, love child with Leona Helmsley. And you can see the resemblance. I think L. Ron Hubbard and Leona Helmsley really got along quite well. And um, they were, they, so they got, they became intimate according to, um, and they had Monique as their love child. So isn't that interesting? Um, isn't that interesting? Now, uh, I just wanted to brag about Monique. She was just a f uh, featured in Ecclesiastical Lawyer Monthly. I says, I, you know, and his byline is, why start a religion when you can represent one? You know, I agree. It's been so much more lucrative for me to uh, represent a religion than to start one because I don't have the makings of a cult leader. So, um, you can see uh, UFO cults and crash with Marshall Herp Apple White, Monique there on the cover with the Miscavige Rico file, and she said, "Not to my knowledge," and other perfectly good lies. When she did that TV interview, she kept saying, "Not to my knowledge," which which I say all the time when I'm asked a question, "Did Mr. Miscavige beat his staff?" Oh, not to my knowledge. Does Scientology engage in money laundering? Uh, not to my knowledge. This is a great line. Practice it with me. But you have to act like astonished, like you would even be asked the question. So does David Miscavige beat his staff? Not to my knowledge. I've never seen it happen. How dare you attack a global ecclesiastical leader, the leader of leaders? And Tom Cruise has met all the leaders, and we're lucky to have um, David Miscavige as our leader, says Tom Cruise. What an idiot. Um, Annette Bates, uh, by the way, Annette, I wanted to ask you if you're part of, if, does your family own the Bates hotel? I just wanted to know, no, I, cause I'm that thing in the shower scene creeped me out and it happened at the Bates hotel. So you're not part of that. Just Michael Pena played an astronaut, so he should be qualified. Well, he's got some ethics problems. He's in lower conditions. And so till he cleans it up, um, that would make. No, it would no, it would make Monique a love child, Sarasota Jerry. That was a term reserved back in the old days. Now it's a love child. And um, L. Ron Hubbard was the baby daddy, is the baby daddy. And um, so we're, oh, yes. Um, uh, Ecclesiastical Lawyer Monthly. She also told a uh, Anderson Cooper that we handled the beatings internally. Because Anderson Cooper said, why didn't you go to the police if if 
Mr. Miscavige hit so many people, that's felony assault and battery, and you should call the police. And she said, we chose to handle it internally. See, that's the great thing about Scientology, all the beatings and assaults that go on. We try to handle them internal, internally, but we don't always win. And then the police get involved and it's horrible. Um, wealthy, insane cult leaders, this is my line, equal endless billable hours. I like that. When you have wealthy and insane, insane cult leaders, you have endless billable hours. Oh, the Moonies, the money we've made off then. And then special feature, when is blinking too much blinking? Body experts say that blinking, excessive blinking, is a sign that you're lying. And Monique Yingling was blinking like crazy when she was talking to Anderson Cooper. So if you're a good lawyer, you'll make the cover of Ecclesiastical Lawyer Monthly. And uh, fade to black. Now we dolly back. Now we fade to black as the line goes from Steely Dan. And so that brings you up to everything. Um, questions before, before our, um, because I have, um, I have to go meet, I have to go meet um, some of my fellow lawyers. And um, we're going to have some billable hours this evening on some flaps. So, um, but I did like the, um, I did like the Scientology spaceship. That would be cool. I think that's something Scientology, if they actually, you know, had, if they actually built a big, you know, 1930s style um, airship hangar and a, and, and a flying saucer out in the desert, that would be like a tourist attraction. That would be a lot more interesting than the, than the test center or the citizens community or the, Citizens Commission on Human Rights Industry of Death Museum, which is really a freak show. Um, I think this would be so much better because like what you want to do, in my opinion, in my opinion, if you're branded as a, a um, you know, uh, a space alien cult, you need to like lean into it, lean into it, embrace it. I've always tried to tell um, Captain Miscavige, he needs to like lean into it embrace the idea of being a space alien cult sell it because a lot of people would buy it they'd a lot of people would really buy it if you would just lean into it so i think if you actually did it even if it didn't fly people would flock to you so i don't know why scientology is so afraid of leaning into their space alien i mean if you owned it it would be so much easier to sell it um CRB leaned into it. Oh, he leaned into it in a big way. <laughs> Captain Bill Robertson. Yes. Yes, sir. He did. And um, so. Hi, hi, Chuck Beatty. Good to see you, Chuck. Um, yeah. Spaceships. Scientology should make some spaceship toys and sell them in the bookstore. Chuck, I agree. I think if they wouldn't run away from it. Um, Airships are making a resurgence. Uh, you're correct. In fact, I was up at um, Moffitt Field and the Google Plex two weeks ago, and um, Sergey Brin's 400-foot-long uh, airship, they're building them in one of the, um, the airship hangars at Moffitt Field, and they take it out at night and test it. And he's got some interesting plans for that. And I didn't get to look at it. I was hoping to get a look at it. They're reskinning one of the um, blimp hangers. And if they're huge. And after they reskin it, the value, they're going to value it at about $2.3 billion because they're irreplaceable. So um, anyway, uh, I wanted to go back to... Anyway, so the concept to look for... What I, to things to look for next with Scientology... Uh, Grant Cardone will continue to get bigger and more popular than David Miscavige, which is really making David Miscavige pissed that Grant has the limelight. But in the, on the other hand, FM, no static at all. Oh, I love that song. Yes, FM, no static tonight. It looks like an, upon, an atomic suppository. Grant Cardone. Oh, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. The spaceship. Yeah, it does look like that. It does look like that. So 
Uh, Grant Cardone is getting more popular than David Miscavige, and he's now viewed as the de facto leader of Scientology by many of his fanboys and fangirls. And David Miscavige is mad about it, but on the other hand, it's taking the heat off him. Um, and so we're going to look next for this ad to come out. This is the new social media campaign uh, from Cardone Capital and, and Grant and Elena. You're getting a sneak peek here only on the Easter at Mill show. And uh, I like it. I think it'll win. So um, uh, final comment from Warrior Queen. I feel so enlightened after learning about the boner rundown and the pink lady bits rundown. Well, good. Maybe that's the reason for people would become Scientologists because you don't need Viagra when you have Scientology. But however, if you're not in the mood um, for 2D and you just want to nod off and go to sleep and want something boring that will take care of insomnia. Ugh. And then one more thing. <laughs> Scientology Life Improvement Course. How to improve relationships with others based on the works of Elrond Hubbard. Can we be friends? <laughs> I have to show you something. This is caught my eye. Got to check a lot of it. <laughs> okay, now this is how communication works. You flow communication from one terminal. That means a person from one terminal to another. <laughs> this is what how stupid Elrond Hubbard thinks you are. Okay, so we'll start on, on this page. Hi, Bill. How are you? Joe asked Bill. Just fine. Thank you. Okay, next page. Over, over on this page. Okay. How about we ride into town and get some food? Bill asked Joe. Good idea. I'll saddle up the horses. Great. <laughs> That's what's called a calm cycle. <laughs> How about we ride into town? How about we ride into town and get some food? <laughs> How about we ride into town and get some girls? Um, <laughs> some of this stuff you can't make up. There's a thing where you can buy a membership. In the back of all the old Scientology books, they always cram it with a church, a list of addresses. Um, and um, <laughs> ensure, ensure you have your membership. That's when this was made after 1986. That's when the IES. Ensure you have your membership. And so some of these old books uh, people send send me books you need books you need oh books to help you counsel others uh, you need the volunteer minister's handbook so there's all kinds of stuff but I say that we end the show by um, riding into town and getting some food and uh, follow the rules for happy living oh wait a minute why did we have conflict. Oh, <laughs> well, I won't go into that. Anyway, thank you for watching. What is that first grade C spot run? Yeah, that's how Hubbard, Warrior Queen, Hubbard thinks you're an idiot. <laughs> so Pete, way too difficult for me. Glad there were pictures. Me too. <laughs> the subtext. Is those two cowboys are going to play Brokeback Mountain? <laughs> yeah. Well, what say we end the show and uh, ride into town? So saddle up your horses. We'll ride into town and get some food because I guess at the ranch they didn't have any food. They just maybe had possum stew or something. <laughs> DM would ride a Shetland pony. He <laughs> would a net, a little Shetland pony. Uh, but I this cracked me up. <laughs> too difficult for me. Glad there were pictures. Yes, I was glad to. Otherwise, I wouldn't have understood the concept of, hey, Joe, let's ride into town. Let's saddle up the horses and ride into town and get some food. 
<laughs> anyway, oh, thank you so much for for spending time with me, E. Stuart Mills, fake Scientology lawyer, bringing you up to speed on all things Scientology. Too bad you weren't one of the 135 million people watching David Miscavige do a fake opening of the Paris Ideal Org. And I'm off to replay for the BRD and Pink Lady Pits. Okay, we'll have a great weekend. Uh, you too, Linda. And so we will uh, go back to that. Oh, where is it? Where is it? I don't know how to work this stuff. I'm going to go back to the great image, and we're going to end up on some really nice music. So I'll see you next time, folks. And... No, it's just not going to work. Well, we'll end it like that, and we'll pretend there's music. I'm very disappointed. Oh, I know what's going on. Here we go. Here we go.